be happy. I want to be happy. One of the things that I noticed is that automating all the things make me happy because if you don't automate, you have to build guidelines. You know, for deployment, you have to SSH into that server, then SSH into that other. Then you have to change a user, go to this, get pulled, change, clear cache, do some, do the tasks. So, on one side, if you're doing it five times a day, wow. On the other hand, if you're doing it like me, like once every some months, then I have to do it manually. I forget steps, right? Anybody have that issue of forgetting the steps? So. If you go to a new project, some developers are like, yeah, if I have to set up that new project and there's no readme how to automatic, automatically do it, I feel like a tortoise. And that was the better one than this one because I want to hide. I don't want to do that. I want to be fast in things that I do. Right? Have you ever came to a project that you could have set up with one or two commands? It might take half an hour to download everything, but it's still one or two commands. I'm not talking about crazy speed. I'm just talking about automation because it gives us speed, really, re reliability, repeatability, visibility, metrics, and stuff like that. So we can all be happy with using migrations and fixtures. My name is Miro Svertan. If you're interested, you can ping me on Twitter using this handle. So what are migrations? So there are server migrations where you're maybe moving your stuff from one server to another, from one data center to another, from one provider to another, maybe even from one continent to another. I'm not talking about that. Maybe you're migrating from one version of your database server to another one. Again, that's not part of this talk. Schema migrations, because at one point, our app will have a number of tables. At some other point, it should have much more, right? Much different structure. So why don't we use migrations to version our uh, app? Just like we use Git to version our code, this way we can version our database changes, the schema changes. So maybe, hopefully not in one case, that you go from five tables to Drupal. But yeah, so any Symfony people here? Anybody using Symfony? Anybody using Laravel? Okay, two hands. So. Uh, they have completely different approach to migrations. So doctrine relies on the code. When you run, when you say migrate, it's going to check your migration files. It's going to check your database schema. It's going to create the diff between them by looking at what's here and what's there and, s and create the migration file. One really important thing is that files are the source of truth, okay? So if, by, if you decide to add a table or a column by hand to your database, migrations will remove it and create a migration saying drop that table because files, the entities, are the source of truth. So how does a migration file look like? So it's a simple PHP file. It has some methods. The most important one for now is the up one. And it says, hey, run this as SQL to create a table and create an index. It has a version that Doctrine will generate for us. And that's it. It looks at the changes, creates the SQL to run them, and that's it. So all that you now have to do is run the actual migrations. So how do we run them? So doctrine migrations bundle, but the library itself 
We look at the migration files that are generated on one hand, and we look at the database at the database table called migrations to check which migrations have already been run there on that database. Are there any new migrations? Hey, yep, there's another one. Let's run it and let's record that we run it by just saying to that table version two has been run. So that migrations do not run again. Because if I run run if I run migrations again and now it's gonna check, it's gonna say, hey, there's nothing new, I'm done. <coughs> but migrations also have rollback. So that if you add the column, you can roll back and remove that column. So this one drops whatever this has done. As simple as that. But I usually suggest do not roll back. Just go forward. Otherwise, you might have issues that you didn't expect. Just move forward. So actually, I lied a bit in the previous slides. It's not version 2, 3, 4, 5, 110. What Doctrine will say is current date, hour, minutes, and seconds. That means that if you have multiple teams working on the same app, they all can generate migrations independently. So there's not going to be a conflict on the number. Okay? And they run sequentially, from the lowest number to the highest. <coughs> but unfortunately, they are locked to the vendor. So if you're used to using MySQL, you can't run those migrations on Postgres, which is not that often kind of a problem, because people usually don't change database uh, servers that often. And if you do, you can always go delete all of the migrations and say, hey, create a new one. Wow. OK, did that one. But Laravel has it a bit different. Laravel has its own DSL to create the schema. OK, that's good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> to create the schema, because in Laravel, Eloquent doesn't know anything about the fields. So you have to learn the DSL of it, but at least you're not locked into vendor because their own schema can run on any engine. And it's pretty easy schema to learn, easy DSL to learn. Create a table users. It has an increment of ID and a string called name. Rather easy. For the running, same thing like Doctrine. So how do you deploy migrations? Just add Doctrine Migrations Migrate to the end of your script for deploying. Near the end, not necessarily the end. And what I get often is, oh, but we have large tables. We need to do that manually. How do you handle it? But migration is, so Doctrine Migrations are just an automated tool. You can do all of that manually if you have a problematic size on some table. So in my previous team, we had three tables that we did create migrations for, but never ran out automatically. Because our deployment script has a timeout, and sometimes the changing a table can take minutes, sometimes even hours. So what we would do is, hey, dear ops, can you run this query or this migration whenever you have the time? Yeah, no problem. I just send the link to GitHub, and they run it. And they manually put the version number in the database. When they tell me, hey, it's run, I just checked with, like, did you update the version table? Yeah, and the migration table? Yeah, push to production. Because the automated one will do nothing. 
It will change nothing. So, what are fixtures? Is anybody using fixtures here? Okay, so what I previously used to do was I would load production database locally, which was a bit of a hassle when the table when the database was about ten or twenty gigabytes, but it became a really pain point when it came to hundred and two hundred gigabytes. Because as well we had to change it often because otherwise we have all the data in it. So why don't we, we prepare some data to use in local development? That's the idea of fixtures. It's the dummy data that you can use as a team. So if you come to a project that I work on, you don't have to manually generate users. If it's a CMS, you don't have to manually create articles or products if it's a web shop. And as well, we can use the same data to communicate. Because if there's a problem, I can tell you, hey, you can check it out using that user, that customer, that company, that article, that product. So how does it look? Really simple. It's class. It has, let's gen generate the user, another user, let's persist it, let's flush. We set an ID, username, and an email. What you could as well do is, instead of repeating, just create a bunch of users. What I usually call this is seeding, and don't please confuse it with Laravel seeds, which are fixtures. But please, don't do it. Actually, don't seed. Because, let's look at this problem. We have a web shop. I got I have a bug reported. I find that we can replay it in our dev. And I tell you, hey, log in as user 17, check category 22 for product 75, if everything works if you're from country one. How do you feel about that? Wouldn't you like, hey, log in as Alex, check beers, look at causal when you're coming from Germany. There's a bug in the view. Doesn't that make more sense to communicate, to know when to use what user, what product, what article, to have that knowledge? So please try to use proper names. For users, give them some kinds of personas. S this user is a big spender. That user is just visiting. Very important point that I used to do a mistake with. All of my users were male. I would suggest using either unisex names or using both female and male names. Because for most of the companies, our customers are not male only, even if our product teams are. It's a, it gets pretty weird sometimes. So please look at, try to be conscious of it. Demo time. Before demo time, let's do a short prayer to the gods of demo to see if this is gonna work. So, as I have tried that on this projector, but it does give me some problems. If you see any issues, tell me, okay? Everyone okay with that? If you can't read it, tell me. If it's too low to something. Okay, so I prepared a small entity. Let's create an auction site. Well, at least auction models. So we have a user that has an ID and a username. So how does the migration look for that? It says, hey, create table user something, and the rollback says delete table users. I also added some fixtures here. 
let's create an admin with an ID of one, and that's it. So let's say that we need to add an email to our user. Okay, so if you have never used migrations, you might have used Dream Schema Update. Which will say, hey, what are the differences between current entities and the database? Anybody used it before? Okay, so. It says, hey, it will add an email column to users. Great. But let's run Doctrine Migrations. It's going to generate a file. Wow, cool. Thank you for not updating. Wow. Turn on, turn turn off, turn on. It actually put it on that same SQL into a migration file. Nothing more. But what happens if I run it again? And this is a common mistake that people do. It's going to create another migration that actually does the same thing. But when I run migrations, it's going to blow up because it will try to add the same column twice. So everything that we actually have to do is, wow, this is not refreshing at all. Okay, so everything we need to do is delete this one. So what I usually do have is a short script that drops current table, creates current table, uh, runs all of the migrations, and runs all of the fixtures. Okay, and now my fixtures blew up. Any ideas why? I added a new field that's not nullable and it can't save the user anymore. So everything I have to do here is say admin email is admin at example.com and run it again. And this is the best part of automating because whatever I screw up it takes me just one click back to get everything done from scratch and as you can see it takes six seconds which for some reason when my laptop is on battery it's really slow usually this takes about half a second so don't worry on how much time it takes okay but let's add another item, another entity. Let's call it auction. Okay. Oh, wow, I can't even type anymore. Auction, it has an ID and it has item title. We don't need an email there. Okay, let's generate a migration. Oh. So what I actually did was a typo. I called generate migration we just create an empty file so that you can manually add some migrations if you want to 
What I really want is a diff. Which says, hey, let's create that table auctions. Great. Refresh the database just to see that still everything works. While we're doing that, I'm just going to add an auction fixture. Auction. Auction fixtures that will be and lamp is new auction and lamp ID is one lamp and item title is I'll be a blue lamp. So lamp not as Linux Apache MySQL PHP. Just not to confuse some of you. I added the migration, I added the fixture. By the way, any questions? Okay. So, do you really trust me that this ran? PG from users from options so the data is here we have that data in the database uh, no it's this thing okay so let's do something a bit more complex like I really don't like the item title name I'm gonna rename it to item type to title I'm going to generate a migration. So Doctrine migrations actually figured out that I renamed one property or a column to another. And this has caused a lot of bugs. Because what people sometimes do is they drop one property and add another one and run the migrations. And migrations think, oh, so you are actually just renaming that property. So if you're dropping some column, have a specific migration for it. Okay? Otherwise, you might be transferring title to VAT or something like that. Well, not VAT per se, because of the integer part. Uh, I'm just going to use this part for the last. So, but auction also has to have an owner, which would be user that doesn't have to be inverse by anything. Let's create a migration. Let's run everything to see that everything works. Wow, my Mac is really slow today. Oh, oops, so I did the boo-boo. Auctions actually need an owner. Hmm. Lamp owner is O, but how do I put the user here? I want to use that same user from the other fixture. So what I have to do is set the reference for this and say, hey, this set reference 
user admin is admin and then here I can use this get reference user admin so that I don't need to create another user in that, in that fixture they can be shared another error and nobody knows why auctions ran before user so there's no user admin so oh how do we fix that so there are two ways I'm going to show the quicker one where we implement ordered fixture interface say hey this will have order of 10 and the auction fixture ordered fixture interface Turn 20 it's still broken insert into auctions Did I miss something? Wow, okay, I did miss a lot of things. But that's why I drop everything and create everything from scratch. Because mistakes do happen. So as I'm building this auctions feature, wow, okay. I think that it does want this, but that's why it complains. Okay, so actually, I screwed up so many things building this fe feature that let's just drop current migrations. Okay, let's run refresh. It's just going to create that user stable, nothing more. And the fixtures might, might die. Yep. But if I show you how they look, so this drops the database. This creates the database. So actually, to get everything nice and running, so that you don't think that I'm cheating. Let's create a database. And let's just run existing migrations. So our database is now in has the schema of before I started working on the fix on the feature. Okay. Okay, so now it's just going to run that one migration and I can just run the fixtures. That's it. So it gives me opportunity during development of the feature to have things versioned and if I screw up something I can always just delete them and start back because Often what I do is have a really small entity with maybe three properties and I keep adding those. And I really don't want to have 10 migrations for an entity that adds like you has like five properties and I said nulla below. No, it's a string, it's not an int or something like that. Wow, okay. That went somewhere. Unfortunately, demo gods didn't help me that much, but thank you. <laughs>